Fever is an acronym for Faces and Voices of Recovery. Uh, we're a UK-wide charity and we've got just under 5,000 members across the whole of the UK. And those members are made up of people who are in recovery and their family and their friends and allies who support us. So we are a, we're a charity who put forward lived experience. We have been operational since 2009 and we've been trying to make recovery visible since then, uh, but also challenge policy and make the treatment system better and advocate for people who are trying to navigate the treatment system because quite often people have major problems getting the help that they need and that they want and that they deserve. Well, in Scotland in particular, there is very little choice of treatment. Uh, there's also tremendous problems with access and treatment. So, for instance, we advocated for a young lady. Um, this is with one of the guys uh, who works for Favour UK fighting for this young woman. And it took us 24 weeks just to get her a methadone script, you know, so... Even, you know, if someone comes to us as well who wants detox or rehab, that can take, you know, even longer. And at the moment, for most people, it's not even on the table for people to have a detox or rehab. It's also incredibly difficult in Scotland to get access to other medications that can help and um, that aren't methadone. So there's just, there's two main problems at the moment in Scotland, treatment, Access and treatment choice. The repercussions are that there are more people dying in Scotland than what they are in England. Um, and, you know, our nearest neighbour, there's actually almost five times less deaths. So it just means that we're failing the Scottish people. It means that we're you know, our families and friends are suffering when they don't need to. Um, if, if our treatment system is more robust, um, they, they wouldn't have to suffer and, and they wouldn't have to die. Well, one of the things that the Scottish Government should be doing is making sure that people can access treatment immediately. Now, that treatment might mean medically assisted treatment, it might mean detox, it might mean rehab, it could mean community rehab, it could mean residential rehab, but they could, if they really wanted to, if there was a will for that to happen, they could make it happen. They're not making it happen. Naloxone is, in theory, great. In practice, most of the people who are dying are dying in their own homes, they're dying alone, and they're dying with benzodiazepines in their system. Now, naloxone does nothing in those situations. So naloxone has become a political red herring. It's something that the government's organisations, their quangos, continually promote. It's something that they've encouraged peer workers to promote, and that's a good thing, but... It's not tackling the problem that's right in front of us, and it can't possibly tackle the problem that's right in front of us. Scotland has got exactly the same laws as the rest of the UK, and we've got five times more deaths. It's not the Misuse of Drugs Act that needs changed, it's our treatment system that needs changed. In most parts of England, if you turn up at a service, you will be seen that day. You will get a substitute medication that day. You will be stabilised that day. You may even get access to community rehab. Um, you'll be put on a waiting list for residential rehab. I'm not saying that in England things are brilliant. They're not. There's still a lot of improvement to be made in England as well. But they've got the basics of harm reduction much, much better than what we have in Scotland.
the main advantage of speaking to someone in recovery is they will share their experience, strength and hope with you. And what that does is it immediately gives a message of depth and weight that other professionals can't possibly carry. And, you know, in any therapeutic process, it's that rapport that matters, it's that connection, and it's also the therapeutic value of one addict or alcoholic helping another, and that is really missing from Scotland's treatment system. So the Right to Recovery Bill was um, developed by Stevie Wisher and myself, and um, really it was born out of despair and frustration because we have witnessed so many of our friends and family who have died. Um, there was a young man that we both knew who died on Christmas Day in 2019 and we we were just, we were exasperated with the treatment system and Stevie had the experience of working in the homeless uh, sector so he, he had the experience of seeing how the law changed the treatment system and how the law could act to get people access to uh, homeless accommodation and houses so we, we looked at the old bills that had been attempted before and we thought, OK, well, we'll try and look at why they failed and we'll try and create something that has got a good chance of passing and I think we've managed to do that. I think it's really important that every MSP gives this a fair hearing, whether their party agrees with it or not, because... The treatment system is broken, we need the law to help us. We need the law to instruct the local authorities to provide treatment for people because at the moment they're not providing that and they're not, there's no legal duty for them to provide it. And our friends and family are dying, so they have to provide, you know, the law is there, it's there to work for the people of Scotland. Let's use it, let's use it to fix the broken system. Well, for anyone who doesn't understand or have any experience of a loved one suffering from addiction, I would ask them to be open-minded and to take into consideration that it's the people in our poorest communities who are dying in the highest numbers here. So, you know, if you're a, if you're a person of goodwill or even a person of, a, you know, a decent heart, you know, please think about the data here, think about the statistics, think... I think about why so many people are dying, you know, what is it that Scotland is doing that, or what Scotland isn't doing uh, to provide treatment and help and support for people who so desperately need it. And I know that some people might think it's a lifestyle choice um, or they might think there's, um, you know, there's some sort of morally bad choice being made um, in my... my um, my response to that would be just to ask them to consider, you know, the research in this area because the research tells us that the majority of people who do become overwhelmed with substances or other addictive behaviour are you usually using it as a coping mechanism for trauma and that's quite often childhood trauma and, you know, we are, we are demonising and... Um, you know, marginalising people who are really, really ill. And uh, I would just ask them to have an open mind and an open heart and think about this a wee bit deeper than what's on the surface. <laughs>